Hello, everybody. Welcome to the football fill in the Premier League. It never disappoints, does it? Oh, my God. We are so, so lucky, by the way. Arsenal scored another last-second win. Those celebrations at full-time... That is what we want to see. That is the beauty of football. I think Arsenal are going to do it this year. Other massive wins for Southampton, Wolves and Chelsea. Oh, and Man United suffered their biggest defeat in 92 years. I said that right. 92 years. Liverpool 7, Manchester United 0. We're joined by the main boy himself, Thogden. Absolute legend. Oh, and if Mark will get from behind the back of the sofa, he's here too. <laughs> Right, obviously, there's only one place we can start. It has to start at Anfield. Marky boy, thanks for joining us, mate. Right. Um, you, you're wearing this today, aren't you? You're wearing this today. Intro, like I just said there, biggest defeat in 92 years. Talk to me about the 7-0 drubbing yesterday. Well, first of all, I think that, you know, I can't be bantered. I can be bantered, but I can't be bantered. Unbanterable. I'm unbanterable. I'm not going to school. I'm not going to work. I'm <laughs> bad. Look, at the end of the day, this is what supporting your team's all about. Stand up and give it back. And that's the whole problem with United yesterday. They didn't stand up to the defeat. It was cowardly. I'm not going to go hiding. It was absolutely ridiculous. Pin your shoulders back, yeah, mate. Yeah, Keep your head up yeah. high. You wear it, yeah? Yeah, you do. I mean, it's disgusting. It's disgraceful. But ultimately, you only get three points for it. We've already won a trophy. We will get top four. We still need to buy players in the summer. We need to get the Glazers out. And, <laughs> we, 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 you know, but it's, it's devastating. It is. 7-0 is just not acceptable. I can't find words for it. And I think, unlike certain pundits on the telly, um, I think that, you know, Liverpool have to be given credit because they could have just gone 2-0, we've got it. And they absolutely saw an injured animal and they just, they just mauled us. And, and we, we just gave up. Fogden, I'm going to talk. We want to talk about Liverpool in a minute, right? But first, we've got to talk about Man United because Man yeah. United were a shambles yesterday, weren't they? Yeah, they were. I was actually at the game. Yeah, <laughs> how was it? What was the atmosphere yeah, it was like? Unbelievable. I think a lot of people say that the Anfield atmosphere is overrated for yeah. Premier League games. That's that's. I can debunk that that rumor. That was myth. it incredible yesterday? It's unbelievable, mate. It was just. I was in the main stand. The cop never stopped singing. You'll never walk alone. You felt from the first moment they were going to win the game because they were up for it. How they went from conceding five goals against Madrid just in their last game at home to turning it around, keeping a clean sheet, scoring seven goals against United in the biggest game in the Premier League. I feel like the fans were the perfect 12th man in that game. I know we're meant to be talking about United, but I just want to give credit to Liverpool because yeah. they deserved that. It's been a very tough year for them and they showed the character on and off the pitch. I was buzzing, um, I won't lie, I was buzzing with Liverpool a little bit because I've got Mo Salah in my team yep. and I've got Darwin Nunes in my team as well. And the points that they gave me yesterday absolutely saved my game week. Differential, wasn't it? Differential, I, I had all massive. three. I had Robertson, Nunes and Salah. Oh, you absolutely cleaned up yesterday. We're in the same YouTuber league, by we the are. way. And you and me. Both, I think we both got the same amount of points, 72 points. 72, we mate. Shake on it. There we go. There we go. Both. Thank you, mate. Thanks uh, a lot. Right, let's bring it back, <laughs> let's bring it back to Man United. Um, I want to talk about individuals, all right? Because I, obviously most people... People would have watched the um, Gary Neville and Graham Souness and the little sort of banter and stuff. And by the way, Gary Neville did not wear it very well yesterday, did he? Like, I agree yeah. with you. You're supposed to be a bit impartial after games, aren't you? Yeah. So either way, whether you're Souness or Gina, you've got to be a bit impartial and see it for what it was. But there were individuals in the game yesterday for me, for Man United particularly, who I'm not happy with me. Body language, Bruno, for example, shocking yesterday, wasn't he? Yeah, and I think, look, in fairness to Gary Neville, I think that's just the petulance that maybe some people have. You know, it, it came across as really unbiased. And, and I think that's just the Man United player hating losing to Liverpool mm. and just going, no, I'm not having it, I'm not having it, I'm not and having it. And he had two, like, Liverpool yeah, smurfs yeah, there, yeah. just sort of yeah. smirking at and him. And Souness like, was yeah. poking him big he time. Was, he was, he? But, yeah. but look, I think, I think the way out of that is to accept that, actually, you know, you've got to take all the banter, you've got to take all the criticism, and you've got to look, you've got to individualise it, even though collectively, I mean, you were talking about Martin he didn't play well. Luke Shaw's a player. Look, I look at the players I like. They yeah. disapp- I mean, Anthony, I like Anthony. He's been criticised a lot. Disgusting performance yesterday. Call it out. Rashford, I really like. Disgusting performance. Bruno, massive fan of him. Disgusting performance. But Luke Shaw as well, massive fan of him. Terrible. Casemiro didn't look right. Um, Varane wasn't right. Maybe he was carrying the injury before the game. Martinez, so much... Cra- I mean, look, what annoys me is you get Carragher coming out. Oh, I told you about Martinez, <laughs> I told you. And you just knew... We're in March. It's March. And yeah. he's now got his game yeah. where he can go, I told you Martinez was shite. And he's like, he's not. He's just had a really bad day. And um, 
I think individualising it's easy. But what I do not like, and I know you're going to say something about Bruno as well, is that when I look at the general uh, mainstream, it will always be De Gea, it will always be Martinez, it will always be Bruno, it will always be Anthony, it will never be Luke Shaw, yeah. it will never be Scott McTominay, it will never be Marcus Rashford because we don't go in on the English or the British players. British bias, you reckon? There's yeah. a massive British bias, it's always there. Um, yeah, I just... But no, I, I agree with Bruno, I haven't seen it and I know that apparently he has to come off and he is the captain. Our win ratio with Bruno is fantastic, but... I'm not for individualising it, but I do think that I, I just, every, every, everybody's open, really. So I, I don't know if you've seen this clip, Theo, where yeah. um, Bruno's obviously captain yesterday. His body language, by the way, was shocking throughout the game, like finger pointing and arm waving and all that kind. He when, does it every game, though. When, when I see players do that, honestly, it's the worst, the worst thing you can have as a, as a worst trait you can mm. have as a player. Like when the chips are down and you're waving arms and pointing, basically deflecting, saying it's not my fault. Mm. I'm not. It's not my fault. I've done this has happened. It's rubbish, though. As a captain, you I, can't be doing it's that. It's true. But at the same time, there are games where he's vital at doing it, winning free kicks, getting in the face of the opposition, winding up the teams. And United have had some very big wins this season where Bruno has come away with the away fans absolutely hating them, but yeah. United fans loving it. It just didn't work out. He does do it, it every it, week. It, it, he does it every game. But Gary Neville had a pop at him as well, so you're in good company. Damn right as well. That's yeah. what I mean, I think that's I think obviously having played the game, having be, knowing what it's like in the dressing room when you play with those sort of players who finger point and arm wave and mate, it's hard to play I, one player though. Oh, Six no, it is hard. To, yeah. But I just I, I want my captain to. I just want my captain to lead. And, yeah. and even if you are losing 5 0, go, come on, let's yeah. go. And the camera tells a story because the camera probably panned in on Bruno and it panned mm. in on Rashford after one of the goals. And he's just staring there with this blank face of anger. Or, you know, it's just like that. And I'm like, it, it makes him look a little bit, I'm, you know, you know you, yeah. it makes him look a bit arrogant. And I'm like, well, he's been really good for us in recent weeks. Martinez got put on his arse by Salah. That makes him look shit. Oh, he's he not did shit. get put on his you arse, know. didn't he? He kind of slipped a bit, but still, when you've got Mo Salah dribbling at you with his little <laughs> quick feet, oh my God, yeah. that's If, hard, if that it's 2-0 and, and you play like that, you, you, you're gutted, but you move on. Yeah. And it could. It, that's the thing that annoys me, is it mm. should have been 2-0 or 3-0. Shut the you know, shop, boom. Shut the shop down. Uh, you know, we were going to lose yesterday. Liverpool get the credit. People played bad. It's inexcusable that that goes from two or three to seven. That's the thing. There's no you can, excuse. You can lose, but, but you have to say Manchester United. They've been travelling loads recently. Yeah. They had European games. They went down to Wembley for the Carabao Cup and Premier League fixtures. Busiest time of the, the fixtures. But it's, it's the, the biggest game, are, biggest game of the season. Though you've got but the players to find are not robots. that energy, haven't you? You've yeah. got to find that energy. I know, and also seven goals is inexcusable. Like you said, if you're two 0 down, you sharp shop, you take that result, you move on to next week, creating it to seven goals. You know that as the goals are increasing, you're just thinking. How are United accepting this? Have, Why, an, have an energy drink at half time. Yeah. You know, they lost 6 0 in the second half. They didn't have an, I think they mixed the energy drink up with a few pints. They, they were absolutely. They were, Do you know what, though? Talking about half first. time, two goals came in straight at the start of the second half. And, and in the Liverpool section, loads of Liverpool fans were still finishing their beers. The score went from 1 0 to 3 0 when they walked out. Aww. Yeah, they what, missed what, two goals. What was it like after the game? What was the atmosphere like after the game? Was there no trouble or anything like no, that? No, it was, was all, trouble, yeah. yeah. Was there really? Loads yeah. of Liverpool fans being very loud outside yeah. the ground. You know, some fans don't even have tickets. They've come to the ground for the party. And at United, they all hoods up, kind of scared. There was two United fans in the section in front of us. They weren't celebrating any of the goals. And they walked out in like the 70th minute. They gave in. They were just in the Liverpool section. They didn't celebrate one goal. And me and my dad were like looking at them for every goal, just seeing their reaction get worse and worse. A bit like you on your live stream, really. Just getting angrier and angrier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, come on, let's just give Liverpool a little bit of love. We're going to move on to the Arsenal game in a second. But we've got to give Liverpool a little bit of love because we did a United stand video before this, Ogden. And we were talking about um, Robertson and Trent Alexander Arnold. And I think yesterday, Yesterday was probably one of their best games of the season yesterday, wasn't it? Both of them doing what we know that they can do. So, sort of looking, like threatening when they go forward, but defensively very, very good. Andrew Robertson in particular yesterday was just a Rolls Royce, wasn't he? Yeah, and he opened the first goal as well yeah. with that pass to Cody Gakpo. And I feel like there'll be a lot of deleted tweets about Gakpo after yeah. that game. He fit into the role perfectly. Same as Darwin Nunes yeah, with that yeah, header, yeah. with a decisive second yeah. goal, which led it to five more in 40 I, I saw a couple, a couple of the finishes yesterday, particularly from Gakpo and the header from uh, Darwin Nunes, where I thought, yeah, yeah, actually, I'm having that. I think you you look like you've got it, you know. You know what you're doing, do you know what I mean? Whereas before, like I say, the deleted tweets and stuff like that, yeah. I, I myself seen them this season a few times and thought, you look a little bit like you're lost in the headlights a little bit, do you know what I mean? But I saw a cutting edge to them yesterday that I was happy with. We I, can't deny that Liverpool on their day can beat anyone. Yeah. 
I still think their midfield's weak, but ultimately <laughs> I'm, I'm going to use this opportunity because I'm yeah. fed up of going, stick by Pottery, he'll do well. I'm fed up of saying Nunez and Gakpo are good signings, they'll be good. <laughs> I'm fed up of saying stick by Arteta, it always comes true. So today, Manchester United will come good and they're going to win the league next season. They're going to, next give, me, season. give me some of that juice that I keep giving to fucking Nunez and, and, and Gakpo yeah, and yeah. everyone else. And it's yeah. coming true. Yeah. Um, I also said Liverpool will get top four. You and, did say yeah, it top I four. We've got, um, I think we've got a £5 bet on this, haven't we? Yeah. No. <laughs> Had a couple of zeros. <laughs> What's the bet? We've got a little bet that earlier on in the season, I said Liverpool won't get top four. Absolutely no chance. He's he's adamant. He's stuck by it there, and now they've got a better different, get better goal difference than Tottenham. Mm, and if they win it. their game in hand, they can can go into the top four. Um, they experience. found the form at the right time. They'll do they've it. Not conceded 100%. for four games as well. And yeah, you see Newcastle no. and Tottenham, they're dropping yeah. howlers. Recently. Um, oh, before before we move on to the uh, Arsenal game, by the way, I've just got a few stats that I want to. Um, read out about Mo Salah and uh, Liverpool because this is absolutely bonkers. So, um, Liverpool's aggregate score against Man United in their last 10 home games at Anfield, Liverpool versus Manchester United, is Liverpool 36, Mm. Manchester United 2. Jeez. In the last 10 games. This is a good time to announce that he went on my predictions last week and said Liverpool 1, United 3. So, they're winning (laughs) 3 and a half nil Every single game, pretty much. That is absolutely bonkers. Where did you get the belief from? The who? The belief for United to win. Look at the league table. Look at the trophy cabinet. Top Very four, nice. just won a cup. Just um, beat Barcelona and then, home and away. Uh, I've got another stat for you. This is an absolute belter as well. Um, since joining Liverpool in 2017, Mo Salah, um, he's got more yellow cards, more yellow cards from celebrating goals against Manchester United <laughs> than Manchester United have goals at Anfield. Should have, so, sent, should have been sent off yesterday to take that top off. <laughs> Did you see how ripped he is, by the yeah, way? But we oh my gosh. Breaking the record. It's an important moment. Yeah, it is yeah. an important moment. Fair play. Mo Salah was on fire yesterday, by the way. That is, that's vintage Mo Salah, isn't it? That's what we want to see from Mo but, Salah. But so was Andy Robertson. So was Trent. Gakpo. Firmino. Uh, Everybody. Fabinho. A lot of these... Yeah, yeah. I'll guarantee, if they can do it next... I think Man United... They played well, but that's Salah's best performance of the season. By can the I just say... I'll, say... I'll say this now. If Liverpool play like they did that day, they, they can create a remontada in Madrid. Nah. I feel like... Create a what? A remontada. What's come back? <laughs> the famous remontada. You're so beyond your years. You're about 40 years old, you are, Three I swear. 3-0 is what they need in 90 minutes no to take that game to extra time. No more away goals. People write them off, but the way they played that day... I've seen Barcelona. They went to Santiago Bernabéu last week. They won 1-0. Liverpool on the day are a much better team, much more exciting, attacking fluid. I know you're crossing your head. <laughs> I have a feet. I will go to that game. They're I'll a ba- go to that game. They're a bagel, mate. They ain't got a midfield. <laughs> Harvey Elliott, <laughs> Harvey Elliott yesterday was a pummeling in <laughs> with Fabinho. I thought, I thought it was perfect. Do you want a fiver believe- on it? Do you want a fiver on it? No it's, chance. Your no odds, chance, is it? The odds, no. come on, we need to have a good deal with it. I'm just saying it, I'm just saying it. They ain't, they ain't, no, Liverpool will get top four, but they ain't ready for Real Madrid, unfortunately. Um, I think I, I've got to, I've got to agree happens. with Mark on this one. I've got to agree with Mark. You, you can't guys, go away. You guys will, will be memes when it happens. It's All right, come on, let's move on anyway. <laughs> Arsenal, let's talk about Arsenal. Um, what, what a win for Arsenal, by the way. 3-2 um, against Bournemouth. I, I was listening to the start of this game on the radio and... Kicked off here at Arsenal. So, oh my God, that is ridiculous. And they played for it, by the way. They've done it. Have you seen it? The way they kick off, they yeah. know exactly what they're doing. They're trying to get it out to that right wing as quickly as possible. Get the crossing, get in the box. Fair play to them. But Arsenal, to come back, win it the way that they did, is just... I think that's what you need sometimes. Do you know what I mean? You need that little bit of just getting a, finding a way to get over the line. It was incredible, wasn't it? You can't afford to drop. I think they would have been two points ahead of City if they'd yeah. lost that game. And obviously, they've got to go to City. At some point, they're going to drop that five-point gap. You can't lose it at home to Bournemouth. You know, no they've chance. got to go to Newcastle. They've got, you know, um, I think they deserve massive credit. And I, I, mm. I didn't watch the three o'clock because I'd watched the Man City game, and I think I went out in the garden playing football with Seb for an hour, and I turned <laughs> it back on and. He was 2 0 to Bournemouth. I, well, I actually tweeted what, what the hell was going on yeah. with Arsenal because I, I, I know we're not going to win the league and I don't, I, I'd rather Arsenal win it than Man City. Um, but then as soon as they got that goal, I was like, you know, th- they'll do it now. But really, they left yeah. it quite late. Yeah. I, I thought, well, bloody hell, they're not going to do it. But then you could see their game was still going on. Um, and, and, you know, you've, you've been around Man United when they've won titles. These sort of games do happen. I think some people are unrealistic. They think you're going to win three or four nil every week. There were always these types of games. For sure. The thing is to win it, and they did win it. And I think 
it wouldn't, you know, 4 0 or 3 2, you'd probably get more out of that yeah, than you do sure. out of a 4 0. Oh, yeah, the buzz you'll get after winning a 3 2 last minute like that. Well, you saw it, you saw it the full yeah. time, the way they celebrated. Everybody, like the whole dugout, the whole, everybody warming up, sprinting onto the pitch. That bit there is what I think will get them over the line this season. Yeah, I was very pleased Bolton was an early kickoff on Saturday because I got to watch the game. Well, on, on radio, of course, as we all do on the yeah. Saturday 3 pm. <laughs> but no, Arteta, he's. No pretty... dodgy streams around here, Bogdan, all right? You're not no catching dodgy me streams. On we here. don't watch that, all right? <laughs> But just listen to it and, and you hear Billing nine seconds in, get that goal. You know about tactics from being within a football club. But the way Arsenal came back, they look like Premier League winners now. Yeah. They're doing it week in, week out. Arteta's created an aura where players, even off the bench, like Reese Nelson, yeah. are having an instant impact. He's, he was subbed on the 69th minute. He got assist for the equaliser in the 70th. And then scores the winner on his weak foot, top bins, 97th minute. Some finish with the left foot. That the perfect well. story. And it reminds me, actually, when Leicester won the league, they had players off the bench like... I don't know, Damari Gray, who had an instant impact, got the results that they needed to win the league. I'm seeing the same at Arsenal. So I agree with you. I think they're going to win the league. Mm. Do you know what this does to Bournemouth, though? This is an absolute dagger, by the way. Because even getting a point away at the Emirates, right, for Bournemouth is, oh, it's a bonus point. I still think that's a competitive... I still think think Bournemouth might take some positives from that because it's still a very unsurprised... I mean, it would disappoint it, but it still shows that how competitive this league is. I I think it does, but I I think it it takes the wind out your sails massively, mate. If you're 2-0 up going into the 60th, 70th minute, whatever... Still a loss, isn't it? Yeah. Like I say, the 2-all would have been... Even though you would have been a bit disappointed, you're winning 2-0, you couldn't hold on, whatever, but then to go and get nothing with the last kick of the game... Is it at their place as well? They've been a few times. Times this year, just sort of melted at the end, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but I'm happy with Arsenal. I do. I think they're going to do it. Do you think we're going to win the league off yeah. that spot? I said it with Michael Owen this week. We both said Arsenal going to win the league. I oh, just been um, hobnobbing with Michael Owen, yeah, just as you do. Beam in a football challenge. Bet you learned well. a lot there. Ballon d'Or winner, you know. Give yeah. it to me. Football challenge. I just we did some headers and volleys. <laughs> just some little... Michael Owen then trying to get a moving about that. Have you seen that? Was, he's, no, no, he's lost his weight. I'm telling you, he's in good shape now. <laughs> Have you ever seen that Michael Owen thing when he used to play football and there's that like yeah. nine year old goalie <laughs> and he's not giving him anything? He's, he's just smacking him and going, "Yeah, have it, have it in your face." Yeah. Well done, mate. Like you're nine, he, well done, mate. He's twelve. Or yeah. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> smacking him in. I tell you what, though, I'll give it to Michael Owen. He's a very riveting pundit. He, he's not. You know, <laughs> It's bang on. I like it. We're giving people banter today. Yeah, See, we we are, he's giving it out for a bit. Like like we ain't giving him no banter today about you know. We're just saying the fact it is what it is. And yeah, you're coming I'm for spiky everybody today. today. It's spiky. Horrible but, man. But I think personally, I want Arsenal to win it. Man City do worry me. They've got the experience and there's still a long way to go. Yeah, Man City seem to be coming into a bit of form as well. Like just well, like well, we'll talk about it in a bit. But that yeah, Man City worry me. But Arsenal just got to keep doing what they're doing. Um, shout out to Rambo, by the way. Massive save. I don't, you probably haven't seen this because you won't appreciate it like I did, but he made a save. Oh, it was beautiful, lads. They've cut the ball across. They've got two Bournemouth players coming into just Just finish it, lads. Just finish it. He's read it. He's out there like a demon. Blocked it. Oh, beautiful. They go on, win the game 3-2. Ramsdale, you're the boy. Uh, we're going to go Brighton against West Ham. Brighton, Brighton, for me... Honestly, if they carry on doing the way that they've been doing, De Zerbi's going to have to be in the talkings for manager of the season at the end of it. I know he probably won't because it will go to Arteta or whatever, but Brighton this season, I would I would hate to play against Brighton. If you're Arsenal, Man City, Man United, Liverpool, you're playing against Brighton, you're worrying, aren't you? Mm, I'll take it one step further. I'd hate to be a fullback coming up against Matoma. Yeah. That guy, university degree in dribbling. Bloody hell. Yeah, very, very He started good. it winning that penalty yeah. and then he ended it with the goal at 3-0. He's the perfect player, and the fact he was three million. Someone asked me what was the bargain of the season with a player who had the most, uh, who's had the most effect on any team in the Premier League. I always say Karim Matoma. Yeah, the I fact you picked him right, up from you know? a club in Belgium, two point five million. I saw a spark him in the World Cup, but he's brought it back to the Premier League, and now he's doing it every single game. Is yeah. it in FPL team? Of course, he's in my <laughs> FPL team. <laughs> he doesn't miss, was he? I didn't have him. <laughs> you didn't have him, didn't have him. and you got seventy two points. And right? I called it as well. I said he. D- Please, just stop roasting me, man. No, no, no. So, yeah, Brighton, though, they are. They're like, absolute flames. West yeah, yeah. Ham having a bit of a shambles at the minute. We'll talk about them in a second. But Brighton, you would. You'd worry. If Man United had them next week, you'd worry, wouldn't you? It's not an easy thing in the Premier League to predict that Brighton are going to beat West Ham. It's quite easy. But it's not an easy thing to then go and beat somebody 4-0. Yeah. Um, and I think Brighton are unbelievable. And it's only because they're Brighton that they don't get the focus. We probably don't focus on it as much as we should do. Yeah, and they certainly yeah. don't in the mainstream. If they win all their games in hand, they're, they're fourth. Ridiculous. And the last few That's weeks, mad. the last few weeks, we've been talking about Brighton are so unlucky. They've had this goal offside. They've dropped points in their last three that they should have probably got. Yeah. So actually, if they win their games in hand and they have the points they should have had, they'd be in the top four. That They are literally 
one of the most dangerous teams in the Premier League. I think if you drop them into Serie A or La Liga, oh, they'd be in yeah. exactly the same place because they play a brand of football that is transferable across mm. Europe. If they had an out and out striker, yeah. they, they would, wouldn't they? They would they're a bit like Chelsea in a sense where they they, they can do they just batter teams, they dominate teams. Probably mm. Chelsea actually don't even do that to be perfectly honest with you. But they are, they're battering teams, they're just not putting the ball in the back of the but, but they all fell in place on Saturday. But you talk about out and out strikers, they've got this eighteen year old lad Ferguson, yeah. the Irish lads. I tell you what, he he's not he reminds me of Shearer, but Shearer wouldn't work in the modern day because Shearer was a you know, he didn't have the link up play yeah, and everything sure. like that. He's got power, he's got pace, he's got finishing ability, and he's got the link up play, and he's only eighteen. I yeah. think he is a player I would love to see at Manchester United. He's been uh, he's been DMing him, telling him to come uh, Man United. Yeah, get yourself out. I swear he has. I haven't. Um, anyway, we'll move on. And um, it's uh, I don't I don't get into anyone's DMs. But, but the reality is, I, I think they're fantastic. I'd love them to get European football. I'd love them to get top four. West I'd... Ham, talk to me about West Ham because uh, we, on yeah. this on this show, right, Theo? Every single week we say West Ham won't get relegated. They're we currently sack Moyes. They're currently 16th in the league, and they've just been pumped four 0 I thought he was going to get the sack on Saturday, by the way. And they've, apparently they've come out and said like, no, your job's safe for the say. meanwhile. But um, what's going on at West Ham, mate? Well, we forget and they just beat Forrest at home 4-0. Yeah. And then I got, I'll give it to Mark, got him on predictions. I said, as Moyes turn a leaf here? And he said, absolutely not. He should be sacked. And then they got battered 4-0 at Brighton. So, fair play. Did I? Yeah, you said that. I'm going to contradict myself. <laughs> <laughs> you've, done, no, you've done well there. Moyes is... I don't uh, know what I say day to day. You do that many interviews now, yeah, mate. You no. don't know what you're saying. Yeah, but I, I, think, I think you're right. His job's on the line. And if results continue in this fashion, who, who have they got next? Who West Ham got next is oh, Aston on. Villa. I think they got Villa at home. A big one, a bit a six big point one. to one kind. Villa of on really. form as well. They've won their last couple games. Ollie Watkins on fire. I think that could be the final straw for David Moore. I know what I said. I know what I said because I said I wouldn't sack him now. I'd sack him in the summer. Hundred percent. I did. Hundred percent. Sack him in the summer, but I wouldn't sack. You him You weren't now. positive about him though. You didn't. No, no. I think he, I think he's got to go. But I, funny, I was doing my talk sports show on Wednesday, on Saturday, and West Ham fans were ringing in saying, "Get rid of him. Get rid of him." And I said. Fine, it's your club. Who are you going to get? Yeah. Because there's no manager that's keeping you up that's available. Moyes has been in that situation. Yeah, he's done it's it It's not going to be pretty, yeah. and I know you hate it. It's a bit like what I've said about Chelsea. You don't change your manager now. Get to the end of the season, and that, yeah, 100% Moyes has got to go, but he's probably the right man to keep you up. Yeah. It won't be pretty... But he probably. I is. agree with you. I think. I think even to come to the end of the season, I don't think they'll sack him. I think it will just be an amicable part of the yeah. ways. He'll understand the situation. Yeah, yeah. They understand the situation. Let's go our separate ways. We'll go and try and move on from it. it managers run. The if course, Dice was they? available, I'd do it. Oh, if Allardyce <laughs> was in his prime, I'd do it. We all Maybe love even Tony Pulis. Pulis, but, Pulis but, TP. But there's, there ain't no one Big like Sam. that. Yeah. They're all Mike, Mike, Michael Carrick from Middlesbrough. Don't Carrick, don't go anywhere Big near Sam that. Big Sam makes job. Antonio score twenty goals. Oh, 100%, 100%. 100%. I guarantee. Um, right, you mentioned Chelsea there. Let's move on to Chelsea. Massive win for Chelsea. Potter in. Yep. They needed this bad boy, didn't they? Yeah. Um, so where are they in the league at the minute? Tenth, Chelsea are. Um, yeah, they're, they're still a bit, you know, here and there. But they got the win. They, that's the main thing, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, and you can see Todd Bowley was celebrating in the end there. Yeah, Must be very happy that, yeah. to finally... I think it was a six-winless run, mm. finally with three points. I think this is a message to anyone that says Potter out and wants, I don't know, Jose Mourinho to come in, all this nonsense. I think I don't listen to your football opinions because if you're a Chelsea fan <laughs> and you've just spent <laughs> 600 million... A lot of people the same with you. <laughs> probably they do. And if they don't want to, they don't have to listen to me. Yeah. But I have an opinion here and I think... Graham Potter needs to be backed. He's not had a proper pre-season with all the new signings. I thought he was good at Brighton. And I think he will thrive at Chelsea. I, I actually feel like they'll turn it around against Dortmund midweek in the Champions League too. Yeah, massive game. I, I, I don't think... Everyone's jumping on the gun. Right now, managers have the impossible job. We've seen over the last decade, managers get sacked twice as quick. Because there's too much money in modern yeah. football. There's less pressure for owners to sit there and be like, oh, we can't sack him because of the budgets. No, you can sack him, bring someone else in. Sack him, bring someone else in. It's becoming an impossible job. I would hate to be a manager. I would not do that job. You, you are just, you're just, you're used, you don't, you don't, you're not seen as a human anymore. And that's why I think you've got to back Potter, give him a proper pre-season, let the players join in and understand and, and build. They've got something there. It's just going to take time. And next week on Questions... I know, <laughs> Very, yeah. very, very political I, answer there. Wow. Do you think it's a good one? I, do you agree? Yeah, no, no, I, I do. I, do. Yeah, I, do. I totally agree. I do. I'm with you. I think uh, I disagree in the fact of I would take the job, though, because I know that I, if I'm getting sacked in four months' time, I'm okay. getting the payoff like you wouldn't believe, and I'm absolutely buzzing for it. Yeah, but it affects you, doesn't it, for your future jobs? Yeah, maybe. I'd, yeah, look, maybe. I'd do it as well, because I think I've got an ego and manager, <laughs> managerial... It's like, you Can know, I just say you're, you're a pinned tweet as well? Yeah. Great managerial team talk. But, but I do think the treatment of Potter's unfair, and I do think you're right about pre-season, and I do think it's ridiculous... 
They defend quite well. They yeah. just can't score. Yeah. He's picking Havertz every week. It was crap. Every time I watch them, he is absolute crap. But Potter's intelligent. Chelsea fans are going, why does he keep picking him? You know, because he's probably on training ground each week and going, that's the best yeah. one I've got. Yeah. That is, I mean, you know, I think it's so difficult. And also, it's the same with Moyes. Who are you bringing in? Because mm. no way is Pochettino, Jose Mourinho, Luis Enrique or anybody ah, else walking to Chelsea in March, they're going to go, I'll come in the summer. So you've got what you've got, give them till the summer. It is what it is, leave it as it is. Yeah. There's no point in rocking the boat now, just leave it as it is till the summer. Like you say there about the score and the goals, Chelsea 24 goals in 25 games mm. this season. It will come. Yeah. That is how, that, I don't know if it'll come this season, mate. I really don't. You can't get to 25 games into the season and then go, oh, we'll start scoring. Defensively, now. they're very good, though, aren't they? Yeah, very good. 20, 24, 25 conceded in 25 games. Watch Felix against Dortmund. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah? Watch Felix against Yeah, Dortmund. to be fair, they battered Dortmund in the last it one. Again, they just couldn't put They've the got the, the forwards, the they've got the players. It will click. That's the game. If they win that, I think you'll start to win the fans back. Well, we'll see. We will see. Um, Man City, I want to talk about them. Um, oh. I watched this game, you watched this game. Yeah, I'm yeah, go on, talk to me about I'm it. I'm fuming with Newcastle. I mean, they've look, Newcastle fans on social media are not that nice, yeah. but I've always been quite positive about Newcastle, even though, obviously, they have won the lottery. Um, but the reality <laughs> is... And, you know, fair play, if you've won the lottery, enjoy it. And But they're, they're just almost, like... That was appalling on Saturday. I thought in the Carabao Cup final, they were a little bit unlucky. They played quite yeah, well, yeah, but United yeah. game managed it. They had top four on lockdown. And for some reason, well, explain this. Why have Newcastle fell off? I watched them on Saturday and Man City weren't very good. They were there. No, for, they, they should were have they? at least got a point. Both goals were mistakes. Um, Trippier's pass out from back on yeah. the second one. The first one, no one... I mean, everyone, everyone, someone said to me, it was, it was Messi-esque by Foden. It wasn't. The doors opened. He went into it. He scored it. Three of the, the terrible defenders. That fucking Gordon's not worth 40 million. He's rubbish. Bit That's disrespectful, Bert, Bert, though. It's a pretty, neat, pretty good goal. No, no, credit to Foden. But what I'm saying is, defensively, I'm like, Foden, Gordon's not gone with him. Burns too slow. Gomez is scared about the penalty. And Botman tries to tackle him. And it You're in the in. whole half-empty glass thing here. No, no, Bill no. Foden I, did a no, great but, run. And he's trying to break into the team. A lot of people have given him stick online. I, he I'll, came away with a great goal and an important Game, I'll, give him a, I'll give him the credit, but defensively that never should have happened. Yeah. And I'll give Man City the credit for winning a game when they weren't very good. But Newcastle should... Four or five big chances. Either they missed him, Callum Wilson, of his first long staff, yeah. and you just go, there was a result there for Newcastle. I love this today, lads. I'm feeling a bit of, like, <laughs> like angst. They won't get yeah, top yeah, everyone, They're not The great thing is about the Premier League right now, relegation battle, European spots, title race, everything's locked for grabs. Newcastle are gone, top four gone. Head's gone. Gone. For, for gone. Newcastle, right, if they don't get top four, which I think they're going to struggle to now, the worst thing they could do is go and get fifth or sixth, honestly, mm. because Europa League for them is like, not. if they get conference, Europa Conference League, oh my God, you're back in at like the end of June, whatever, do you know what I mean? You get no holiday whatsoever, you're straight playing games, or you just do not it's need probably that, good for you. the league though, isn't it? What do you think about this? It's probably good for the league, for Newcastle not to get top four, because as soon as they do, yeah. that's when their money the big can be spent. Just, yeah. just to respond to you, I, it's, it's funny you hear that from a player perspective of like having a, a very little break, but as a fan, yeah, they'll love it. If my club yeah. went to Europe, Newcastle would love it. Love it. The fan, Newcastle fans would, would love it. Yeah, it's all it all it is my dream. I, as a Bolton fan, yeah. when I went to Atletico Madrid as a kid, that's like the peak of my Bolton, really, yeah. Bolton fan experience. Like going there, beating Aguero and Forlan, and we won. Like we knocked them out. Like that was my that was my pride. Yeah. So hopefully one day Bolton will have a European tour again. A few years ago, to think that Newcastle were even saying that it's a bad thing that they gain Conference League. Like, imagine the perspective a few years ago. It's mad, isn't it? And they are, again, what, we're talking Newcastle properly as football people looking at it and going, they've sort of blown it a little bit, what's gone wrong. It's disappointing because they were so good at the start of the season. Yeah, like, yeah. Almiron fell off a cliff. Massive, so many yeah. of them. But to be fair, a lot of Newcastle fans would, would be here going, we're really happy with what's going on. Mm. We're loving it, would, we're living yeah. the dream. I think they are, fair I think enough. they are that team that they're enjoying yeah. the, the, the away days, you know what I mean, the yeah. trip out to Wembley. And like you say, even if they get into Europe, I guarantee you from a club's perspective, they won't want to be in the Europa League, they won't want to be in the Europa Conference League because it's, it takes so much of a toll on the team for the rest of the season. I promise you it does. It takes yeah. so much of... You have to have two very good starting 11s, basically. You need a massive, like massive squad to be able to do it, to actually try and compete. And then, it will... It 
it'll just tire you out. It tires players out because you're playing Thursday, you're playing Sunday, and it's just relentless. In that form, it's absolutely relentless. But um, Man City, quick, I just want to mention uh, Haaland because he's my, he's my without doubt nomination for shit out of the week. <laughs> it was incredible. Did you see this? They had the little ruckus and he's giving it to big Dan Byrne and even, even Haaland's looking up at Dan Byrne and he's, he's making out like he, he means this and he wants to have a little fight and stuff. But then afterwards, he's, he's purely laughing. Wasn't he face. going up to the fans like this, like yeah, firing them up as well? Giving it all that kind of thing. Le- you, you just see him smiling. It reminds me of Scott McTominay, he does that. <laughs> not, not very good. But yeah, then no, there's no. a fight and he gets involved because it's like everyone will go, oh. Yeah. He's the latest member of 1D, Erling Haaland. <laughs> One dimensional. <laughs> he's very good at what he does. It wasn't a bad he's assist. So one, he's, so, oh, he's so one-dimensional, though. Yeah, it's, it's he's world class. He's he world, cla- world class. He's world yeah. class, but he's one-dimensional. Yeah. He's changed Man City a bit. Anyway, come on, we're going to move on. Uh, Wolves, Tottenham. Um, listen, as a kid, right, I was a Tottenham fan. I, as you grow a bit older and you play football, you kind of lose your allegiances a little bit. You know what I mean? You have a you have an affinity for the clubs that you've played for. That's the way, just the way put that a, it goes. Put a different shirt on every week. Put a shirt, different shirt on every week. By the way, I will always wear a different shirt every week. By the way, I, I, I don't care who I wear. I, I, apart from Wolves, I won't wear a Wolves shirt. Right? I've just put it out there. I'm sorry, I won't wear a Wolves shirt. But I was a Tottenham fan as a kid right and for me at the minute it seems like it's a bit of a weird one being a Tottenham fan because mm. you don't know what you're going to get from one week to the next Antonio Conte still not in the country yet they're they're very good on telly one Sunday the next week they play against Wolves and I could see this result coming I really really good Tottenham were lucky don't wrong they hit the, they, I think they've hit the crossbar twice really good free kick at the crossbar Wolves go and win it in the end though and it didn't surprise me Theo mm. Adam Atrari, what finish as well? Tom what a finish. I don't know if he meant it. this, by the way. Have you seen this finish? It is yeah. a ridiculous finish. Like, it is in the top of top corners. Well, his first goal in 20 games probably didn't mean it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but fair play to him. And I think the problem was, we saw Antonio Conte, best of luck to him in the surgery and everything. He won manager of the month, but he played, he managed, he was on the touchline for one game wow. and they lost 4-1 to Leicester. And he wasn't there for Wolves. I feel like you do need a manager there to, to, to get the players going again. Yeah. And I think the players because of the manager not being there, they're starting to look at the bigger games like Milan. They've got Milan midweek. They need to turn it around to the Champions League. Yeah. That's the biggest game they've got. So it's very hard to motivate them when you go to Wolves on the weekend. Mm. I-, I think they're blowing it for them, top four. With Liverpool around the corner, mm. they need Conte back as soon as possible to fix it. So boring. They're yeah, so with boring you. to watch. Mm. And to be fair, I know it's not controversial because I know Spurs fans feel it as well. They're such a boring team to watch. Um, apparently there was a story over the weekend that Spurs won't renew Conte and Conte wants to go and it feels like that fair play to mm. them for actually being in a top four race I don't know how they've managed to get into it because they're such a they're such a mm, but, and you knew that game was going to be I thought it was I was surprised there was a winner I, yeah. I would have gone nil <laughs> nil all yeah, over yeah, so well done to one yeah. Tottenham. I, I think Tottenham are. I think Tottenham will just fizzle away, though. I mm. think they will. They'll, they'll carry on this form to the end of the season. They'll win one or two. They'll lose one or two. Draw one, Six. and then and then they'll drop out of the Champions League places into sort of fifth, sixth position or something. Liverpool will take over, and they'll just go on a storm run now. And that is a seriously disappointing season for Tottenham, isn't it? From where they were earlier on in the year, looking like it was cemented that they were going to get top four, and they've just fell off again. Also, as well. They buy players like Pedro Porro, yeah. they don't pick him. Jed Spence, they don't pick him. Basuma, they don't pick him. Richarlison, they don't pick him. He buys all these players and then they don't pick yeah. them. It's weird. And then they have defenders that play every week, yeah. Lengley and Eric Dyer, and you just think, is the money invested in the right spots here? Mm. Yeah. But let's, let's be honest, before this week, before the Leicester result, they were top two in form in the Premier League. Mm. How, do we, how do we describe that? Wow. <laughs> they're in, you know what? They're an Italian club. We said this <laughs> yeah, a couple of weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. It's like Italy in the, it, traditionally, Italy in, in major tournaments will baffle you how they get to the final yeah. or the mm. semi-final every tournament. And, and Spurs are the same. I don't know how they are where they are because they're such an uninspiring team to watch. Um, let's move on then, Laz. Yeah, Southampton, Leicester. Um, I didn't really see this one coming. Leicester, mm. again, one that I just can't pin down at the minute. Madison was useless. He made his return and he was invisible. Really? And you could tell that Southampton were going to win that game. From the penalty, Ward-Prowse missed it, fine, but they kept their heads up. Alcaraz, what a finish, by the way. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Fantastic. Argentinian, I think it's his second goal for the club, signed in January. But what is he thinking? He had to get a knee scan after the game because of a knee slide celebration. He's injured himself. (laughs) Nowadays, wow. too many footballers <laughs> are getting injured from knee slides. It's celebrated. No, knee slides alone. It's just, just relegated Southampton, aren't they? <laughs> it's Without like, in, they're buggered. <laughs> like the, the manager, to be fair to him, I've got to give credit, Ruben Sellers, he's yeah. turning it around at Southampton. You can see when they scored, all the players are running to the manager, trying to hug him and That's stuff. That's nice, that, yeah. You feel that. That means something, that, you know. It's a shame they didn't bring him in first, isn't it? They wouldn't have been doing that to Nathan Jones, would no, they, mate? No. Definitely wouldn't have been running No, he would have been pushing him away and going, it's me. Hey, me. It's me, I did that. I scored that goal, all right. Um, <laughs> 
Um, what was I going to say about Southampton then? Um, knee slides. No, Wardy. I had Wardy in goal, by the way. Fancy oh, Premier no. League. Sorry to keep bringing Fancy Premier League up. I had Wardy You got goal. 11 points. Of course I did. I, I got kept it starting. I got a clean sheet. I'll take it. Um, right, here we go. We've only got a couple of games left, you lot. Um, by the way, unfortunately, we've got no um, mystery shirt this week. Um, <gasps> it didn't get delivered in time. Jamie, it's your fault, by the way. Absolutely <laughs> in the mud, Jamie. And, um, <laughs> there, they just didn't arrive in time. So there you go. They'll be back next week. Don't you worry about it. Two more to go. Then we've got the quiz. Um, Forest Everton, two all. Um, go on, get into this one because this, this is a good result for Forest. But a bit, I'd say it's disappointing for Everton this one because yeah. they were winning until late. Yeah, winning, winning twice, weren't they? And uh, but Forest are good at home. Yeah. Uh, was it Johnson got two goals, didn't he? Probably, probably not a bad result really on the predictor for yeah, everybody. For everybody you go, yeah. you go like that keeps it interesting. I do worry about Everton a little bit yeah. because Villa lost. Draw at Forest, one from six. They've got, I think they've got Chelsea, Spurs, tough, and real tough ones next. coming up in the next few weeks. And you can write those off and go, anything's a bonus. But this is for me why Everton didn't sank Lampard Lamp- Lamp- quick enough yeah. because there were games that I think Deitch would have won, like Southampton mm. at home. His first two games, he had Man City and no Liverpool and Arsenal, yeah. and he got three points three out points of that. Him, yeah. He's now got these three. It, your running's what it's all about. Um, I still think he'll keep them up, but it's so tight down there. And, and Forrest are just sort of keeping themselves... Forest home form could keep them up. Yeah, can I just say, to go there and get a point is pretty solid. Yeah. Did you see uh, Daish's second goal? No. Oh, Fozzie, you'll love it. Watch it. It's like proper dice ball. It's like they take oh, a I've goal seen kick. the goals. Yeah, Tarkowski's goals, yeah. on the right wing, heads it on. Michael Keane's yeah, yeah. on the edge of the box, heads it on. The core yeah. go goal. two on up, limbs in the away, and Toffees fans go, well, obviously they bottled it to Brendan Johnson's top left corner. Yeah, it was a lovely finish, right? that, by the way. Seven goals now in the Bodies in front of him just helped it round him perfectly. The two lowest scoring teams in the Premier League with an absolute cracker. From I listened to it on the radio. Off to Anfield, I was loving it. Well, look at the look at this. We'll put a graphic on the on the um, screen now, guys. Um, not, from Nottingham Forest in 14th, which I'd probably say is a cut-off line. Wolves are on yeah. 27 points, but I think Wolves will probably have enough. Um, from Nottingham Forest in 14th position on 26 points, down to Bournemouth in bottom on 21 points. It's five points separating 20th to Mad. 14. That's why the Premier League never fails. Like Honestly, this season in particular, I think it's one of the best, one of the most exciting because there's something for everybody. Nobody's getting cut adrift. Nobody's winning it clear at the top. There's always little battles all to play for all the way through. I want to see some of that's football live streams for these relegation dogfights. Mm. Yeah, I want to see some of these. You always do well. the big games. No, I will do. I will do. And I think the last game we've got to do, if I'm predicting, is Villa Palace, which is the Final only game Villa Palace. Come only on. Mid- table game yeah. in existence now that is exactly that's how good it. the Premier League is because everyone else is either going for the top four yeah. or going for the title or going for relegation and actually Villa might very soon be getting themselves into the European spots because they are they're, they're doing very well Mate, they're Two sneaky wins, right? they are really sneaky you know, sneaky right. mm. don't get me wrong they play 25 games so they're they're, they're in tw- they're in 11th Villa are same Brent- as Chelsea isn't it Bre- same as Chelsea Brentford in 9th uh, they're only a point above them but Brentford have got two games in hand and so do Brighton as well um, but for Villa this is this is job done mission mission accomplished 34 points you only need what 4 or 5 more to get like probably safe at what they say the 40 point mark but this is good season for Villa so far that game wound me up, mate. Like, I've got Watkins. I signed him on FPL. I had one transfer. I switched in Watkins. I, I don't know. I sold Mitrovic. And I, I was waiting for that ball. Matty Cash crosses it in. I'm like, yeah, yeah. he's coming through. He's going to score. Like, he's scored every game. Joachim Anderson, what are you doing, mate? Oh, jeezy. I was raging. That would have been the perfect differential. No one has him. Nobody he's does He's brilliant. That. He's scoring goals every game. I think he scored four, four out of his last four, has he, or something like that? Yeah, something mad. He's getting in the, the FPL of... show. Boring. Know, sorry about this. Boring. Anyway, and I... anyway um, no pre-season, no signings in January. Yeah. Emery's doing a fantastic job, fantastic coach, and exciting. For European Villa. tour. Well, why not? He's got that in the summer. See what he can do this year. Doing a good job. There you mm. go. Simple as that. Let's go and have the quiz. <laughs> All right, everybody, it's the football filling quiz. Um, Theo, I don't think you've done it on this format before. It's basically fastest finger first, all right? Let's go for it. Ten questions. Simple. Mm. Let's go, Jamie. Let's go. What is the nickname for Derby County? Rams. Wow, that was quick. That was a quick one. All right, next one. How many goals did Messi score in his record-breaking Canada scoring year? The closest wins. Oh. So you all get an answer. And this, this includes one. Argentina goals, doesn't it? I believe In so. a calendar year. Calendar year, yeah. Oh gosh, I don't want to. I don't want. I don't want to jump in. I'm nervous. Mark, Mark's got number. I'm going to go with sixty. Okay. I don't think it's that many. Fifty-two. 
Oh, it's definitely more than that. I know it's more than that. I'm saying 61 because it's nearer. It's more. It's more than 60. 91. Oh, oh my god! god. Oh my god! Oh, Messi scored. I, I had I had 72 in my head as soon as that question came out, and I thought as soon. That's why I didn't want to jump in first. Yeah. Are you Tennis. serious? Wait. Yeah. Wait. 91. What? In a calendar year. In a calendar year. Oh, calendar year. Calendar year. I thought it was yeah. Even that's ridiculous. Yeah, that's yeah. bonkers. I had, that's um, I had 69 in my head. I don't know why. Hey, I like it. I like it. <laughs> All right. Next question. So what? One. One. No. Yeah. Wayne Rooney made his debut in a 3-1 loss against which club? Fenerbahce. For England. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, I said England debut. Hey. I said England debut. Wayne Rooney made his England debut in a 3-1 loss it's against It's not my time, lads. This is, this is your time to shine. Germany. Nope. You were probably playing. Nah. England, innit? Oh, gosh. Um, this could be anybody, really. Yeah. Anybody half decent. I'm going to go for France. Nope. Austria. Australia. Oh, I didn't even give it. He didn't even answer. get an answer. He went on. What's the, wrong with you, Quizmaster? He said it's before. Not it's he said Shocking. it's not my time and didn't bother. He won't get it anyway. We're gonna yeah. get yeah, it. Yeah, I wouldn't get it. No, Fair play, dog. <laughs> Who did you say? <laughs> I said Germany and then I said Austria, but it was Australia. Good Australia. Day, mate. Never would have got that. Lost three one. Wow. If it was cricket, one maybe. one nil. Let's go. Who was Chelsea manager between June two thousand and four and September two thousand and seven? Mourinho. Ranieri. Yes. Oh, so we're leaving. One, one, one. Oh. Actually, technically, you should have said the second tenure as well. Yeah. That's what threw me. I'm not having it. I said it before the end of the question, so... Comments will be on my side. One, one, <laughs> one. Which player had the career path of? And elect. Chelsea. Mini company. No, it's not. Why'd you say it? Why'd you jump in, you... Uh, Lukaku. Let's go! I didn't even... <laughs> Let's go! Let's go! I'm getting all the Chelsea ones right. Two, one, one. One! <laughs> <laughs> you this comeback, me? this remontada. Oh, this remontada is ending up on TikTok, seriously. Jamie's got a sore throat today. He's been out of the weekend. Dude, he, he Deidre was... Barlow's <laughs> risen from the dead. <laughs> <laughs> I apologise. Yes, King! <laughs> Which Arsenal striker scored in six seconds after coming on into a game as a substitute during the North London derby in December we'll 2007? Wilshire. Uh, Fabregas. Fabregas. No, you only get one answer. You can't just go saying names. Sorry, sorry, sorry. He came on after scoring. Van Persie. Nope. Thierry Henry. Nicholas Bentner. Oh. (laughs) Lord Bentner. I wouldn't have got that, but fair play. It wasn't Fabregas. I swear he came on and then ran through the team. I think the answer says um, Bentner. No, but do you remember the Fabregas (laughs) goal? Do you remember what I'm talking about? He scored after six seconds after coming on as a substitute. Yeah, definitely not Fabregas. (laughs) It was his first touch anyway. Next question. So no one got a point on that one. So two one one. Which team scored their th- uh, thousandth Premier League home goal this weekend? Liverpool. Nope. A thousandth Premier League home goal this weekend. Man City. Correct. Oh, that was big. That was so big. Yeah, that was, that was a massive point. Two two one. Two two one. Gobble chip mud. Not one for three weeks. <laughs> I win. Three, three questions left. Which Premier League striker has made senior appearances for both Brazil and Spain? Costa. Correct. Oh, I knew that as well. Two, two, so two. Good. did not know that. Yeah, yeah. Wolves, Costa. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah Costa. Yeah, 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 Costa, yeah. The ugly one. The ugly one, did you? <laughs> two, two, two. This is unbelievable. Down to two questions. Which team scored the only own goal this weekend? Oh, Palace. Uh, no. I, it was, um, I talked it about was, it. It was, Anderson. Uh, Joaquin Anderson, Palace. Aston Villa. Oh Alex. my god, what am I doing? No. Yeah, yeah but, but I said it was Palace who scored it. Yeah, no, 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 no. We, we both don't get that. No, I would get it first. No, because it's Villa. First. You said the what wrong team. What team scored the only own goal? Aston Anderson. Villa. So I haven't said Nancy yet. Aston Villa. No, but he gave it. And you said we go to the next question. Wow. I'm only getting interest in here because it's close. If Carragher scores he an said own goal, the answer. it's a Liverpool own goal. Yeah. It's got to be Anderson. That's exactly yeah, what it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Thank you. Probably gets yeah. point. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe this, Jamie. I, no, I, I can't I, believe I it. I, I can't believe this. We both get this. it. I went Anderson. If yeah, you Anderson. win, yeah, if you no, win no. this, you win with an asterisk. No, I don't. Like Liverpool. You want a point for being second place. <laughs> I'll give you that. Palace scored yeah, an own goal. Yeah. It wasn't Villa yeah. who scored an own yeah, goal. Yeah, it's just in my brain. We were 1 0 up, so it was yeah. like a bit. I understand, Jamie. Don't worry. Sorry. I got, I got you, Mark. Don't worry. 3 2 2. Oh, come on. Don't let him win again. Who, oh. who is the youngest player to get 50 goal involvements in the Premier League? Rooney. No. Theo Walcott. No. Oh! You got. This is to make it even. <laughs> it's so easy as well now. I think about it. So obvious. Youngest player. Goal involved. Oh, you should have got this. You should have got this. Premier League. Stop giving him hints. If 
you, it's you, obvious. You don't get this. Should we say the same? I'm going to no. whisper it to you. I'm going to whisper no, it to you. No, you're giving too many hits away. <laughs> the youngest player in Premier League history to get 50 goal involvement. Yeah. First. Um, you don't know it. I do know it. I'm going to have to do, have to do a countdown. Come on, down. Come on, fuzzy. We need a countdown. Time up. Five. Oh. No, no, no. Hold on. This ain't fair. You can't Six. count down it. Give a plan. Lukaku. <laughs> Get in! It's Rashford, isn't it? Ronaldo. It's Michael Owen. Oh. Michael oh, Owen! <laughs> Legend of the game, by the way. No, Legend of the game. Mark Goldridge wins the quiz. What? God! No, he doesn't. Three out of four. No, He's not he won in four weeks. That's, That's, That's been the football quiz. That is bollocks. Absolute Sponsored mistake. by Mark Goldbridge. <laughs> Is, to win on that question as well, oh my god! I'm with you, mate. I don't think he should get that. He said, he said Palace. The answer was Villa. No, no, no it wasn't. The comments were back. back Who scored yeah, the only back goal back. of the weekend? What team scored the only goal with the own goal of the weekend? Crystal Palace. Yeah, Anderson. Yeah, you can't, can't turn take. it around. Well done, Mark. Um, Thank you, lads. Thanks for joining me, Theo. I need to losing seven 0 <laughs> um, Maybe we'll, we'll see you all soon. Thank you, football fill in. <laughs>